Hello everybody and welcome back to another rollback review. Today we're going to do Link's Deity Sword, Majora's Mask. Um, this episode is going to be quite a long one so I'm going to split it into three parts. Um, the handle, the hilt, and the blade. So anyway, without further ado, um, I have the design tree in flat tree view. Let's just get rolling. So sketch one, of course, is just our sketch picture. And um, I've, expre I've expressed in other videos that I like to keep these guys alone. I, I don't usually put any geometry with them. So you just um, uh, scale and set transparency and place and it looks fabulous so we'll go there and then I get working on the handle so um, I use the same technique a lot so which is um, I, I eventually do a loft with guide curves so this is me doing the first guide curve and uh, let's show the sketch so it's this spline right here so I overbuild the spline over here so I'm eventually gonna cut this with a with a line that follows this curve um, but anyway to do that you need to overbuild the surface so I do just that and that goes all the way up there sketch 3 is the other side and as you can see I overbuild and actually I keep this horizontal so these two points are horizontal as well as these two points. It's very important for these lofts to complete um, well enough. Then you have sketch five, which is um, an additional constraint. Open that up. That is the center line. And then we're gonna go to our first profile and I create a new plane parallel to the top plane and containing one of these points since they're all horizontal it shouldn't matter which one you choose and uh, sketch 4 is our first profile so as you can see it's um, a diamond shape I can go into it it is a diamond shape and one point is pierce to this curve over here the other point is pierced to this curve and I just draw out a center line that stems from one of these points comes down vertically and is pierced to this point so it just keeps morphing this diamond shape so plane 2 is the plane on the other side and of course there's going to be a similar diamond it's just going to be a little bit narrower though so it tapers a little bit but it's basically the same mechanism with the two pierces on the both side and then a center line coming through and that pierces to this center curve and now once you got the two profiles and the uh, set of guide curves then you can complete your loft and there's nothing fancy about this and yeah, I have colors on, so let me turn off real view graphics and make it easier to see, perhaps. So there you go, nothing fancy other than the guide curves. No twisting or anything like that. But that's how I complete the handle. No, the bottom part of it anyway. And then I go up to this other bit right here. Or perhaps okay so what I do here is then I draw this sketch over here so I basically have an arc going into a line going into another arc that is tangent to this bit over here but then on the edges I have a I attach a spline and just curve it outward and what that does it makes sure that the profile is overbuilt so it has no problem cutting this bit off so you do that with a split so um, split consume cut bodies and it creates that bit of geometry right there so then so then I get working over here which um, I, I do the same technique um, loft with guide curves 
So I draw the first curve out, which is this guy over here. And of course, the same bit, I overbuild it. But as we find out later, I did not overbuild it enough, but I have tricks up my sleeve for that. So then I draw a similar curve to the side, making sure these two endpoints are, in fact, horizontal to each other. And then I don't go for a center line guide curve. I just um, go for the profile, which in this case is an ellipse, with the two ends, of course, um, pierce. Same stuff. And then I have um, a new plane three that goes right on the endpoints of these curves and are parallel to the top plane. And that gives me yet another ellipse on there. And of course, we're going to loft it. So that looks good and all, but if I hide that away, I had this extra bit of geometry that I hadn't accounted for. And the thing is, I cannot um, trim that away if there's not, not any stuff there. So I was thinking that I would have to go back, um, redraw the curves, and move the plane. But there's actually a very simple fix. And that is with move face. And what move face does is that you pick this face, and of course it just moves it out. But what makes it special is that it extends the sides not only in a not in a linear fashion, but it extends the surfaces that define that side curve and lets you complete a larger solid. So you see it moved the face down like that and extended these outwards which is perfect and then of course we need to trim it back afterwards let me try and hide some of these sketches away so we have sketch 12 so I just draw a single spline show this and I have this as a bezier spline um, uh, also known as a style spline just so I can um, easily put relations to control vertices and make it symmetrical so with that I go ahead and I split this top body which I'll show you what that did not that one but that one so here's before and as you can see it cuts all the way through and after and then I combine this handle part with the blade and then in next part we're gonna work on this hilt bit so i'll see you there mm -hmm.